Let's be honest here, nobody likes to see a naked lizard running around the market or an ugly sweaty ogre dancing on their table when they're just trying to enjoy their well-deserved sweet roll. Hi, my name is Lemon and welcome to my TED talk. Today we're gonna go through the costumes, hats and skins that you can get in ESO for free. If you wanna know how to get the pets and mounts as well, you should check out my other video, just click this thing in the upper right corner or the link in the description. Now, to get most of the collectibles on this list, you will need to have access to certain DLCs, but technically you can get them for free, you just have to wait until a free ESO Plus event. But of course there are some items that are part of the base game, so we're gonna start with those in each category. And first we're gonna start with the costumes. There are four different ones that you can get for leveling up your character. The first one is the Golden Saint. You get it once you reach champion level 20 for the first time. You get the Dark Seducer costume at CP60, Many Marcos outfit at CP100, and the Imperial Chancellor at champion level 160. There are two other costumes in the base game and you can get these by playing PvP in Cyrodiil. The first one is the Arena Gladiator costume. To get this you will need to combine 50 Arena Gladiator's proofs and one Arena Gladiator's exultation. You can get the proofs from the reward boxes you get for completing conquest missions, but only the first box you open each day has a 100% chance of containing one proof. So it is possible to get more than one per day, but only the first one is guaranteed. The exultation can be bought from war researchers. They are located at the base camps in Cyrodiil. But you can also buy this costume from guild traders if you have more money than free time on your hands. And a second PvP costume is the Emperor's Regalia. To get this you will need to become the Emperor of Cyrodiil. Easy as that. In the Orzinium DLC you can get four different costumes. You get three of them for completing the A Cold Wind from the Mountain quest. These costumes are the Cavalier of the Sworn Oath, the Older Xenium Sentry and the Trinimax Penitent Knight. But to unlock the quest, you will need to complete the Hero of Rodgar achievement first. This one is quite a long ride. Basically, you will need to clear almost the entire zone of Rodgar. And on top of that, you will also need to collect relics for the local museum. It's a whole shit show, but it's all worth it, because once you survive this, you can finally unleash your inner furry. And as promised, we have a fourth costume as well. It is the Regalia of the Orzimer King. You get it once you complete the main story of the DLC. The last quest is called Long Live the King. For some reason, this one gives me flashbacks. Scary flashbacks. The second DLC is the Thieves Guild and there are two costumes that you can get here. You get the Thieves Guild leathers once you join the guild after completing the first quest in its main story called The Partners in Crime. And you get the Merchant Lord's former regalia for completing the quest Forever Hold Your Peace. It's the fifth quest in the main story. The Dark Brotherhood DLC has two costumes as well. The Shrouded Armor is the reward for completing the Signed in Blood quest. It's the second quest of the main story. And you get the Black Hand Robe once you complete the final quest of the story called Filling the Void. There are also two costumes in the Morrowind DLC. The regalia of the Scarlet Judge is the reward of the quest named the Scarlet Judge, wow. You can start this quest near the gates of Siran by talking to, wait for it, the Scarlet Judge himself. They really went creative on this one. And we also have the sixth house robe. You need to find and combine its seven pieces. They drop in the Forgotten Ways public dungeon, but you can also buy the missing pieces or the complete costume from guild traders as well. And last but not least, we have another costume in Elsewhere. It is the Pariah's Keef Master, and you can get it if you use 10 plague drenched fabrics in the Orcrest City public dungeon. And now, let me ask you one question. What is an online game without hats? A piece of garbage, that's right. And you know what's not a piece of garbage? I wish I could say me, but this game right here. And boy, do we got hats. In the base game, you can get one from the man, the legend himself. It is the Cadwell's Helm of Heroism, and you get it for completing Cadwell's Gold. But to unlock that, first you will need to complete Cadwell's Silver, and to unlock that, you will need to finish the main story first. Cadwell's Gold and Silver are basically the bigger quest lines of the other two factions. So, if you're from the Covenant, then first I'm proud of you, and second, it means that you will have to go through the different zones of the Dominion and the Pact to complete the quest lines in Cadwell's Almanac. The Crown of Misrule. To get this, well, hat, you will need to complete the daily quest of the three jesters during the Jester's Festival, Hollowjack Spectre Mask. This one drops randomly from Plunder Schools during the Witch's Festival. You can also buy it from guild traders if you want to save some time. They are usually very cheap. There are actually four versions of this mask. This one, the Thicket Man, the Scarecrow and the Pumpkin Spectre Mask. 
The next one is the Mid-Year Victus Laurel Wreath. Now this one is actually not a hat, it is under the Major Adornment category, but it goes on your hat, so what's the difference? To get this, you'll need to complete the Star Maid Knight achievement during the Mid-Year Mayhem. And if you play PvP in Cyrodiil, you can also get the Arena Gladiator Helm by combining 20 Arena Gladiator's proofs and an Arena Gladiator's recognition. These are the same proofs that we talked about before, and the recognition can be both from the War Researcher at your Alliance's base camp. In the Imperial City, you can get the Siege Master Close Helm by combining 20 Siege of Cyrodiil Merits with a Siege of Cyrodiil Recognition. You can get the Merits for completing District Quests, and the Recognition thingies can be both from Talvar Merchants. There is one hat in the Orzinium DLC, it is the Voshrak Ceremonial Mask. For this one you will need to complete the quest named The Anger of a King, it is part of the main questline of the zone. You can get the Cap 2 Horn School Sele for completing the Bloodroot Forge Challenger achievement. This dungeon is part of the Horns of the Reach DLC. The Dragon Bones DLC has the Renegade Dragon Priest Mask. You get it when you enter the Fang Lair or the Scalcolor Peak Dungeon for the first time. The Sigic School Cap is the reward of the quest called The Tower's Fall, which is the last quest in the Sigic Order storyline in Somerset. The next one is the Werewolf Hunter Hat. It's another easy one, you just need to enter the Moon Hunter Keep or the March of Sacrifices dungeon. These are part of the Wolf Hunter DLC. The next one, the Aelid Royal Crown, is part of the Redstone DLC, and you get it once you enter the Depths of Malatar or the Frostwall dungeon. And the last hat is the Mad God's Turban. You can get it by completing the Lunacy of the Two Moons quest in Elsewhere. Now, the costumes can get really boring after a while, of course, especially if the whole town is wearing, let's say, the shrouded armor, thinking they are the cool, edgy kids on the block. But let me tell you something, you can die. I mean the costumes, DYE. Holy shit. And actually, there are a lot of colors you can choose from, and by lot I mean 224. Yep, I counted them. You can unlock these by completing certain achievements, and you can apply them not just to your costumes, but to your weapon and armor pieces as well. You can do this at the outfit stations, this is how they look like. You can find them in bigger cities close to the other crafting stations. Now, if you want to paint your costumes or hats and not your actual equipment, you will need to have ESO Plus membership. If you don't have one, you can still use these die packs or what should I call them? Oh, they are die stems, okay, never mind. You can get these from the Crown Store and they sometimes drop from Crown Crates as well. Some of them have quite strange combinations, but hey, it's still better than looking like this. Oh wait, this one is actually better, okay, moving on. Alright, in the final part of this video, I'm gonna show you what kind of skins you can unlock in this game. Now, unlike in some other games, you need to actually earn your skins in ESO. Well, more or less. Most of them can be acquired by completing dungeon or trial achievements, but there is one that is a bit different. It's part of the base game and it is probably the easiest one to get if you know how to do it. And it is the Crystal Frost skin. You can get it by completing the newly charitable achievement during the New Life Festival. To do that, you will need to finish 12 New Life Charity Writs. These are exactly like the regular crafting writs, but just holiday themed and they only drop during the festival. The other skins are part of the DLCs. The first one is the Soul Shriven. It drops from the simulacrum of Molag Bell that is in the Baratrim Centrata part of the Imperial City sewers. The Draw Matra skin is the reward for completing the Ma of Low Cash Trial on Vetram mode. It is one of the hardest PvE contents in the game, so if you have this skin, it means you have seen some serious shit. The Spider Kith and the Amber Plasm skins are part of the Shadow of the His DLC. The first one is the reward of the Cradle of Shadows Challenger, and you can get the second one for completing the Ruins of Mazatun Challenger achievement. In Morrowind you can get the Fabrication Sheath skin for finishing the Holes of Fabrication trial on Veteran mode. The Dreadhorn Shaman skin can be acquired by completing the Farcrete Hole Challenger achievement. This dungeon is part of the Horns of the Reach DLC. The Sanctified Silver skin is from the Clockwork City DLC. To get this, you will need to kill the three main bosses of the Asylum Sanctorium Trial in the same fight in Veteran mode. To get the Black Marrow Necromancer skin, you need to complete the Scalcolor Peak Challenger achievement. Somerset has the Zamaja's Shadow skin, and you can get it by completing the Cloudress Vanquisher achievement. In the Wolf Hunter DLC, we have the Sable Man Beast skin as the reward for completing the Moon Hunter Keep Challenger. The Marsh Mist Pale Scale skin, <laughs> try to say that fast, is the reward of the Black Rose Prison Conqueror achievement. You can get the Meridian Purified skin by completing the Depths of Malatar Conqueror achievement from the Redstone DLC. And finally, you can get the Sunspire Icefire skin for completing the Sunspire Conqueror achievement. And we reached the end of the list. 
Now, of course, there will be more hats and costumes and skins added to the game, so if you are from the future, sorry for not including something, don't come at me, please. As a final note, you should also know that there are sometimes free collectibles that you can get from the daily login rewards as well. Right now, we don't have one, but we have a camel instead. Yay! Anyway, this is the end of the video, although I have one thing to announce. As you guys requested before, we have created guilds for the channel. We are trying to make it cross-platform, but since it's not how it works in ESO, the solution was to create multiple guilds on the different platforms most of you are playing on. So if you are interested and you want to join and have fun, check out the description for the details. And that's about it for now. Make sure to leave a like if you like this video and feel free to join the club by subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Roll the outro!